Welcome to my YouTube channel, Everything America. Today's video, we shall be looking at the, the practical steps on how to study anatomy as a beginner. This video is a kind of approach and things that you should know as a beginner, someone that is entering preclinica, starting from the level as a medical student or a paramedical student, right? So you have to deploy these things that we shall be saying on this video, enthrone them, work with them, it will assist you in assimilating and understanding anatomy. Anatomy is quite different from other two courses that you offer in your preclinical days, like medical biochemistry and physiology. So as you proceed, you get to know those step-by-step -step breakdown that you that you should employ in your studies it will assist you it will guide you to understand the concept of anatomy ranging from gross anatomy physiology and i mean ranging from gross anatomy histology and embryology right so if you are coming to my channel at the first time don't forget to subscribe like comment and share our video so that other students will benefit from it and also be guided now let's proceed these are the headings that we should be that we shall be explaining right these are a kind of steps that you should take on your course of reading anatomy as a beginner first of all is studying with diagram you have to study with diagrams yes everything you are talking in human anatomy has diagrams it has structures right so first of all, when you approach a topic, endeavor to know the diagram you are studying on that topic. Both their main diagram, the relational diagrams, the surface diagrams, endeavor to know them first before looking out for other things. You must learn how to draw. There is no topic you are writing in gross anatomy, both in histology and embryology that does not have a definite diagram. So the best thing to note is know the diagram. You must draw. You must become an artist. Yes, a medical student or a paramedical student must become an artist. You must learn how to draw. So when you see the diagram of the topic, let me just say a bony structure, get the diagram, draw the bone, learn it. Because having a pictorial view of that topic you are reading will help you to understand the concept on what they are explaining on that topic. So you, you must learn how to draw, study with the diagram. Because almost like 70% of what they are explaining on the topic is under the confines of the diagram, of which when you learn it, it will assist and accelerate on your understanding threshold concerning to that topic you are studying. So learn with diagram. Diagram will help you a lot to study. When you approach a topic, go to the diagram, study those, those labelings. Because when you study them, you discover that it is what they are using to explain it on other concepts, right? So the first thing to do is to study with the diagrams. Learn it. Become an artist. Yes, you must become an artist. Learn it so that it will help you at the course of your journey in that topic, right? So the next one is study with spacemen. Yes, this is what I mean by spacemen. You can see it. This is spacemen. The structures are called spacemen. For example, this is the base of the skull or on the surface of the skull. Imagine reading the anterior canal fossa, which is the most elevated part here. And you just read it like that without having the spaceman with you. It's true that you are going to learn the diagram. It's quite different, right? It's yes, you, you learn the diagram. But you having the spaceman with you will also facilitate your understanding towards the topic you are reading, right? So when you see the diagram, I mean the spaceman, you appreciate it. You learn some surface markings, learn some muscular markings and tissue markings of that diagram. It will help you to write this in exam. You, you, you wouldn't forget it because already the picture is in your brain. You have appreciated the spaceman, right? So you forgetting it is rare. So you have to study it with the spacemen. How do you get the spacemen? Every medical school have anatomy museum. So visit your school 
anatomy museum and request for the spacemen you want to study. That is how to do it. You don't get the spacemen and keep in your house, right? This one is gotten from anatomy museum, right? So you have to get yours, study it in the anatomy museum. It will help you to understand and assimilate them. That is how to do it, right? So you could discover that when you deploy all these measures, it will help you to understand anatomy to the fullest, right? So the next one is study with outlines. I've said it previously and I will say it again. I've been saying it all and all all the times. Study anatomy with outline. In medical school, those lecturers and tutors mark your work with outline. When you don't outline your work in anatomy, it seems as if you're writing, you're writing a physiology. Because physiology is, is more of stories, right? Anatomy is the structure. So you have to outline those structures. Outline them one after the other. Study anatomy with outline. It will help you. That is the marking scheme first. You don't write anatomy when you start, you bring diagram and put at the end. You get, you get your introduction and put at the end. You get the end and put at the first. You get the, uh, the borders and put at the middle. It doesn't work that way. There's a hierarchy to outline anatomy work. First of all is diagram. Diagram must come first. That is why I said that you must learn diagram, study with diagram. The second thing that should come to your mind is introduction. Introduce what you are trying to write on. Introduce it. Followed by other outlines. Now, last will be clinical correlation or clinical and applied anatomy. That is the last one. So you have to study with diagram. Learn them. Diagram will also, I mean, an outline will also help you to re remember and record things you have read in your exam period. Diagram will help, uh, outline will help you to record those informations because when you know the outlines, your writing on them will be easier. But the problem is when you don't know the outline, is a typical problem because you don't know where to start. We, you do not know the exact place to start and the exact place to stop. So outline is essential for you to assimilate anatomy information. So first of all, you study with diagrams, learn them. You study with spacemen, emphasize on it. You study with outline, which is what I'm talking on, right? Is so much important. The next one is engaging in discussion group and teach yourself at the end of your studies. Yes, this is so much important. I practice, I, I practice it so much well, right? So engage in discussion. Discussion will help you. That is why you cannot compare a student, I mean, you, you can't compare a teacher with a student. A teacher assimilates faster and retains so much where compared to a student, right? But that is why when you discuss these things you have read, teach yourself, it will help to sink more and more in your brain. Teach yourself, engage in discussion group, even if you don't have time for discussion. At least get a whiteboard marker and keep in your room. Either in your lodge or in a hostel or in your balcony or in your corner, anywhere, keep it there. After your studies, you, you, you go to the board, pick your marker, draw the diagram, teach yourself, learn the outline. It will help you a lot because these are the, these are the strategic means for you to scale through in your medical school, even in your clinical studies. These measures are also significant. Right? So deploy these measures. It will help you a lot. Engage in discussion group. Teach yourself. As a beginner, as someone that is entering to the level, start making plans to get whiteboard marker. Start making plans to get them. Because maybe at the first stage, you might not see a workable discussion group. But at least you can teach yourself. Get the small whiteboard marker. This one is too big. This small one and put in your room on your hostel or anywhere, teach yourself, draw the diagram, be consistent, insist on it, learn them, it will help you. 
So the next one is making flashcard. Yeah. This making flashcard is so much important. Those flashcards is a kind of point. They are like points in which you, you made from what you have studied. It's like a point, right? When you outline those points and maybe you staple it at the edge of your notes or your summary or your jotter, those points will help you to know what the whole chapter or the whole topic is trying to talk about, right? So it's like a summary. Flashcard is good. Flashcard helps a lot to retain. It helps a lot to know your focus, right? So as you are studying making flashcard, ma making points, great flashcard uh, book, make the point. As you are studying, making the point, it will help you. When you come back to study that topic again, when you visit the flashcard, it will be easier for you to, to flash back on what you have read on that previous day, right? So flashcard is so much important on them. Now we have making summaries. Yes, there are some students that are good in making summary. Like, you see, as CVS is, as the universal system is, that is so bulky and all that. But there is a student that will make a summary on CVS. CVS will be like as if you are reading Clavico, right? It will be so it will be so composed in a way that a layman can understand it, right? And summary is good towards the exam. Yes, students look for summary here and there towards the exam because they do not have time to read essential physiology or read guidance, you get? So summary is so much important. If you're a student and you make summary your hobby, you are good to go. Right? You might even help other students because some students will be looking for you because you are, you are like you are a summary yourself. <laughs> you are a summary yourself, right? So endeavor to bake on, on making summary. It will help you both your student, both your, your classmate, and yourself also. Right? So summary is important. It's like the, of, the overview of what topic is talking about. You summarize it to be so digestible. Because some topics are scary. There are some chapters when there are some chapters that if you open them, you close them back. Because the, the information there is so voluminous and so ambiguous, right? So, but when you see a student that makes summary, that topic will be hungering you to study, right? Because you have looked, you have gotten the nitty-gritty of what the topic is, is trying to talk about, right? So make summary, summary is good anatomy both in gross anatomy, uh, histology, and also embryology. Summary is good, right? The next one is active recall. I do this one very, very well. I do it so much, active recall. I don't joke with it. For me to retain and recall, I mean, for me to retain and know the information very, very well, I make use of that active recall. This is my pillar. Practice active recall very, very well. When you're reading a topic, do not jump that line. Do not leave that, that line. Do not leave that place until you have it in your head. That is what active recall means. Because you, you, you don't read anatomy like as if you're reading newspaper. It's, it's not a story. You must have it. You must have it upstairs. So the best thing to do is to practice active recall. Practice it. Let me just say now, you are defining a vagina. Like, a vagina is a fibromuscular canal forming the female complementary organ, right? You don't leave that concept without having it in your head. It's not possible. Because when you leave the concept and go to the next line, that means that one you left will not be in your brain. So, but when you practice active recall, it will give you an, an overview insight. It will stick in your memory. Those, like for me, as I teach on my channel, I practice active recall so that I will recall it and you stick in my memory and I will understand it and digest it. So active recall is a good studying tool as a student, as a medical student. It will help you. It will help you. Imagine having uh, or doing a presentation. If you do not do active recall on what you present the following morning, as you are studying at night, is, is like a water poured on a stone. 
So you have to practice active recall. It's so essential. It's a vital studying tool. In fact, it is a prime studying tool as a student. Practice active recall. The next is listening to video. I mean, listening to lecture audios. Yes, audios are important because whatever you hear, whatever you hear, transmit faster than whatever you see with your eye. Yes, audio is important. When you go to lecture, as your lecturer is teaching, you can record the lecture with your phone. It's so good. So that as you are reading, you can, you can listen to it with your earpod or your earpiece, whichever one, right? So because whatever you hear sings faster compared to whatever you see with your eye, right? So listening to lecture audios is so much important, right? It's so much important. The ninth one is watching anatomy videos. Yes, this is here I come. Yeah, this is our channel. You, you come to our channel and watch us. You learn. Fine. So any topic you read on your textbook and the topic did not sink, you look for the videos on YouTube. Search for them. Watch them. You, you will gather some understanding that you, you did not see on your textbook. Although they are covering the same information, but of different strategy. So when you read the topic and the topic is not sink in your memory, on your brain, go to YouTube, search for the video and watch it. You get clarified. That is why YouTube is here, channel is here to help you to make every concept more easier for you to digest, right? So deploy the measure of watching anatomy videos. It will help you a lot, like a lot, so much well. So the last one on the list is creating possible MCQ. This MCQ aspect is so much good, right? Because it's, it's a kind of summary. It's a kind of summary, right? When you make creating MCQ as a hobby in your anatomy, like, you, you wouldn't find it difficult to recall what you read on that chapter because already you have used your head to create an MCQ. So it's, it's, it's as if you are summarizing a, a chapter or a topic with MCQ. MCQ simply means multiple choice questions like an OBJ, right? Like objective. So when you, you, when you create MCQs, 15 MCQs, 20 M MCQs from a chapter, you discover that you have summarized that chapter with that MCQ. By the means of you creating that MCQ, you have already summarized the chapter. So, no need again. Creating MCQ will help you. And you also help your students. You, you also help your fellow students. Because towards the exam, they might be reading the chapter while you come along with the MCQ. You give them the MCQ, they practice it. It's as if you have summarized the chapter. So, creating MCQ is so much important. All these studying tool in anatomy, this, the strategies and the measures are all important. All of them depict a significance in your studies, right? So I believe with this, you will get to know more ways to study anatomy. This will grease up and soften your understanding as a beginner on your course of studying anatomy. When you practice them, deploy them, Go with them, it will help you a lot. Thank you so much for staying in the end of this class. I really appreciate it.